Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, it's been a minute since I last uploaded on here because I got a lot of school assignments uh, to do. But we're back again here. I'm going to be doing another Crack Me in this video. I did notice that it looks like a lot of people enjoyed watching the um, Deck 64x32 debug uh, Crack Me that I did two weeks ago so i actually managed to get 246 views which is crazy because honestly was not expecting that and my ida pro one got like 91 views but that's still pretty insane that this one got 246 so i guess people use the x or people want to know more about x64 x32 debug so that's what we're gonna be doing today i'm gonna hit up another one of those uh, ones for you guys. So I did find this fairly simple crack me to do. Um, it claims to have 1.5 difficulty. However, I think it's it's a lot easier than that. Um, but this is a Windows x86 one, so it should be pretty easy to run through. So I already downloaded it and everything, so I have it ready to go here. Uh, but let's launch this application up and see what it has. Okay, so this one here basically just asks us to enter a key and you know that's pretty much it i just could put in hello and I'll press enter and it says my input is wrong press any key to exit and i just exit um that's pretty much how that works so like i said we're gonna be hitting up the uh x32 x64 debug uh to do this with so we're gonna have to hit up the x32 debug to do this one in because it was um x86 okay so we grab this program and we just drag her in here so I do want to mention beforehand, um, obviously I already went through here, I gave it a brief look, I didn't really solve it or anything, uh, but I did take a quick peek to see what we're working with, yeah that's pretty much all I did, so let's just go ahead and run through and try to solve this thing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is hit up strings, so I'm just going to hit search for all modules and I'm hit up that string references. Okay, so I'm in here at string references and obviously I see enter a key, your input wrong, and you know all this stuff here that we noticed before so that's pretty much it i'm not even going to worry about looking through the rest of this it looks like it's garbage anyways so i'm just going to press on right right here i press on right uh i do notice some interesting things occurring in here which is why i say that this one isn't hard it's just that it takes a little bit of logic to figure out if you've been looking at assembly for a little bit or if you looked at assembly for a while you would automatically see something interesting and be able to follow the pattern here but so we're down here at right um and basically i want to show you guys this so if we see this jump this jump actually jumps upwards which is interesting because usually we would see jumps that jump downwards but these jumps actually go up so this jumps up and it jumps up to uh, 401 CDB. So if we, let's look at 401 CDB. 401 CDB is right here. Press any key to exit. Okay, that's good. I guess <laughs> that would make sense because based on this, this would run down to here, and then it would go to here. So that would be the exit. Um, it's a statement that told us to exit. Um, so that's good i guess and then if we look at this other jump not equals uh this jump not equal here actually leads up and it actually leads to 401 ccf so if i scroll back up 401 ccf is right here and that's the wrong key so our ingenuity will just tell us that we're comparing something here and if it's not equal then we want to just go to the wrong so we want to make sure this comparison needs to check to be equal and um, if it's equal then continue along with the program um, and if we look at all of these other jump not equals they all lead to 401 ccf and 401 ccf uh, remember it's just wrong we want to get down to correct or right um another thing before we get started i do want to tell you guys here that there's just a little hidden tab here. You may not have seen it because it would probably be looking like this if you launch up the program, but you want to yank this up just like that. Okay, not like that, like that. And this will give you a little bit more information. What is at that stack pointer? So if you see ESP plus 11C, it's just going to tell us 
what is over there on the stack, what information we need. So let's just go ahead and start uh, this program from the beginning. Okay, so here's our input. Um, our input is being stored at ESP. It's somewhere at ESP. Uh, we call this function here. Um, and then our first thing here is compare um, something at ESP plus 32 to AL. And I guess we don't really need to worry about that for now. Um, I did set a breakpoint up here. This will allow us to step to the program. Let's go ahead and run the program. Now, so the program started running, but let's go ahead and press on this button. Press it again until we get to our breakpoint. Until let's enter a key, we'll put in hello. I'll put in hello world, so on enter. And there you go, we're hitting our breakpoint. Okay, let's check what happens after the breakpoint. So we do have a jump equal, which will jump to 401CF3 if we compare these two. So let's see, 401CF3 jumps down into here. Uh, we're checking AL with something at ESP32 before we get down to there. So the AL register here that we're seeing, it is the 8-bit register for EX. Since H is just one letter, it does it, it is able to fit into AL. So here's the chart, by the way. Let me show you guys. I don't know if you guys seen this chart before, but it just tells you... Yeah, this AL is a lower 8-bit register. But you guys can see here, EX will be the full 32-bit. AX will be 16, and AH and AL would both be... 8-bit so AH is the upper 8-bit and AL is the lower 8-bit and it does the same thing for the rest of these here um, but yeah let me you guys if you guys don't know this chart I would recommend to look at it so we know that I'm pretty sure that this is checking um, for the first letter here and if it this isn't true it will jump down it won't jump but it will just go down to here which that's gonna occur i'm pretty sure that's gonna occur okay so like i said let's go ahead and uh let's launch up the program here so let's continue okay so yeah exactly what i thought so it's just wrong and that just basically went to here so let's restart the program now and I'm going to go back to references, I'm going to go back to write, and we're going to run the program again. Um, and I do want to, alright, so let's run the program again. Let's run, 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 I think we're here, okay, I'm going to put in hello world again, enter, okay, so let's continue, actually, let's not continue. We're right here at this compare that we need to check and that's why I said to bring this up So if we look into here, H is the first letter of our input and it's being compared against S So If I launch up a notepad Let's launch up a new notepad here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put S down Okay, so that could be a, the first letter of the password possibly um, What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on this button right here which is going to be a actually i lied i'm going to press on step over which is going to allow me to go to the next instruction so if i press on here it'll go to the next instruction without um just jumping to the next spot okay so if we look right here oh it says here jump is not taken which we do want jump to be taken so we can get down to here so in order to update that i'm going to go to my zf flag here i'm going to press on it and that should change to a one. And then it'll say jump is taken. If you don't know the flags, the zero and ones on, with flags, I would recommend you guys do read up a little bit more on assembly because it would help you out with this. But for now, just press on it and it'll switch to one, which will switch the state and it'll be able to continue on. So that way uh, we can read through what the rest of these comparisons are comparing against without restarting the program. Okay, so let's go ahead and press on step over again. Okay, so the next one here is a T. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that down, T. And we're gonna have to step over and... Okay, so here's the comparison, E and T. Um, e and T. 
I'm gonna press on next, stomp is taken, but we don't want that, so I'm gonna press on it until it switches to one. Now it does the jump is not taken. Um the next one is I, I believe. Let me make sure. Yep, I and dump is taken, so let's press on I. Dump is not taken. Continue. We're gonna keep going here. Okay, so looks like the next one is L. Press on L. Continue. Jump is taken. Press on here again. Keep going. So this is our input for the hello world. Uh, keep going. Oh, jump is taken there. Press on here. I'm not entirely sure. I might have been one. I don't think it is one. We'll figure it out at the end. Uh, we have an underscore. There might, th there, I think, I think there might have been two L's. I might be mistaken. I don't know. I think I skipped something. There might have been two L's, but let's continue. Um, but there's an underscore here. Okay, let's keep going. Remember, we're looking at this byte PT or uh, byte pointer thing. That's where we're looking for inputs. Um, we're looking for the compare. So there goes our W, and there goes the underscore again um, at this compare. So again, we're comparing the underscore. Let's keep going. Jump is taken. Press there. Um, there goes an E. Okay, then let's continue. And yep, E. Let's continue. Jump is taken. Continue on this one. And there is an A. Let's continue to make sure. Yep, there's an A. And um, as you guys can see, the process just repeats all the way through. Okay. Some weird character there. Okay, it's just jump is not. I don't know what that character is. And there's a Y. Okay, so I definitely messed up something, but actually, I don't know. Okay, so I don't know what that character was, but let's continue. There goes to compare for the Y. There's this jump is taken. And there's a question mark now. Um, let's continue. There goes compared for the question mark and set the flag. And we're almost at the end here. Okay, so we're now at this. And if we look back here, but this is actually gonna it's gonna tell us this is right. I guess that's one way of cracking it, but that's not figuring out the password. Um, that just forced, brute forced till the right. But this is what I got from the input. S T I L E A Y. Let's try it. I don't think it'll work, but. Let's just try it and see. Oh wait, I'm um, not in person here. Yeah, it didn't work. But just by looking at it, I mean, I think it should say still easy. Just by looking at it, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it should say. <laughs> Press on enter, that's just to make sure. Uh, yep, that is the correct password, okay. I think somewhere along the way, I missed something or something I don't know I honestly don't know I'm gonna leave it up to you guys if you guys want to dig through here and figure out why exactly we only saw one L and why we didn't see the S um, you guys can I, I, I have a theory as to why we didn't see it um, but I have to look more into it 
not I'm not 100% sure why, but but just looking at this, the first thing that jumped out was still easy. And I do want to show you guys one other thing that I was looking through. I did I did forget to mention this, but while I was looking at it, I was counting in my head, but um. I was counting the amount of comparisons because that would tell us the amount of characters. So we get to the first comparison. That's one. That's go down. Obviously, the jump would go down to here. So then that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. So that just tells us there would have been eleven characters that needed to be compared in the program. Okay, well that's pretty much all I've got. If you did enjoy and learn something, I guess we learned how to use the, uh, <laughs> the step over, which is very important to know how to use um, because that helps you go down the code line by line and figure out what's going on at each specific spot. And I did show you guys this hidden menu that's down here. Uh, pretty interesting that that this menu is hidden away but pretty good menu to have open okay so at least that's pretty much all i got i don't know what the next video is going to be but hopefully it's going to be some fun and if you guys enjoy drop a like subscribe do all that good stuff and that's pretty much it and i'll uh, see you all in the next one